I want to give you an example of an overpriced listing and what can happen. And who knows, our market conditions may reflect when this happened. This was a long time ago. This was in the mid-90s. Uh, happened between 1994 and 1996. And what happened was the market had peaked in 1994 and it slowly trickled down between 94 and 01. It didn't tank, but it probably went down 1 or 2 percent a year, for maybe 2 percent a year for a seven year period. So it dropped about 15 percent during that period. If your house was worth 300 in 1994, by the year 2001, it was probably worth, you know, 250-ish. It had gone down about 15%. So, uh, it's the mid-90s and a family member of mine uh, wants to sell the family home. And uh, at, at the time, the home was worth three and a quarter, if you can believe it, for a detached house. So, family member agreed with me that the house was worth three and a quarter. No arguments there, and we both agreed on that. And uh, he had at, said to me, well, what should I list it for? And he said, uh, uh, I said, well, let's list it around 329.9. And he said, well, gee, I'm not comfortable with that because they'll probably come in and offer me 300. I said, well, no, I, I don't think that they will. And if they do, just tell them no. And he said, no, I, I'm not comfortable with that. I want to list it at 359.9. Which is fine, but he's immediately set himself up for failure. He's 10% above market value. For the next two years, this uh, happened in March of 94, and we sold this house in March of 96. It took him two years to sell his home. And he had two groups per week on average come through. Over 200 groups looked at this home and nobody made them an offer. There was nothing wrong with this house. This was a nice little house for three and a quarter in a nice neighborhood out in the suburbs, out in Tawasson, nice place. Why would none of those people make him an offer on his house? Anybody, any ideas of all those 200 people that came through? Why would no one write him an offer? Overpriced. Overpriced, but what does that cause? Lots of time. Lots of time. What your pricing does, and if you get nothing more out of this class tonight, folks, get this one thing. <coughs> pricing chooses who comes into your house. So he's got this house listed at 359.9. Let's say these people go look at six houses in a day. The first five are all worth 350 to 355. And then they go look at his, the sixth one on the list. And his is only worth three and a quarter. It just doesn't stack up to those other five houses. It's not in as nice a neighborhood. It doesn't have as much updating. It doesn't have the square footage. The lot isn't as nice. He's got a good house for three and a quarter, but the people coming into his house can afford more. They can afford a nicer house than his. They think they're coming in looking at a 350 house. They're looking at a 325 house. That's why he's not getting any offers on his home. He's got people that can afford more. Where's the people that can afford three and a quarter? They aren't coming in. They don't think they can afford it. So their realtor doesn't show it to them because they don't think they, that their people can afford that house. So that is the biggest, when you price your home, you are selecting your target market. And if you don't get an offer on your home from that target market, they're telling you that you don't measure up to the other houses in that, in that price range. So if you've been on the market 40 days and everything else around you is selling and yours isn't, you know, there's only one, th only one reason why. Each week we have a couple of people come through and nobody's buying and the phone calls are coming from, well, why is nobody making me an offer? And I'm trying to explain to him what's going on and he's not, but we'll tell them to make an offer. And I'm saying, them aren't the right people. They're not interested in the house at any price. They can afford more. So what happens is six months goes by and we go to November of 94 and he reduces to 349.9. Well, that's great, but now we're in a declining market. He actually listed right around the time the market peaked. That was the highest the real estate market had ever been at that time. And I said, well, that's great, but now you know what? The one down the block just sold for 320. 
Markets come to a grinding halt, and now it's starting to trickle down. In March of 95, he uh, reduced to 339.9. And that's great. And I said, the one across the street just sold for 316. What he's doing here, he's chasing the market down, like Ken was talking about earlier. He refuses to take his medicine. He's always 20 or 30,000 too high. Then in uh, November of 95, he phones me and tells me he's going to take my advice. And I said, what advice is that? <laughs> and he said, I'm going to reduce to 329.9. And that was nice, but that was the news I gave him in March of 94 to list at 329.9, not November of 95. But in his own mind, he has now taken my advice and done what I have told him. And I also told him that the one down the block just sold for 310. Market's going down, he's still 20,000 high, and he's dropped his price 30,000, and he's also pretty much, you know, below. Long story short, March of 96, we're now listed at 309.9, and he sells his home for 295. That's the danger of overpricing, and who knows where this market's at right now. I mean, it's gone straight up for 10 years, pretty much, with a little dip in 08. I mean, it can't keep going straight up forever. So, I mean, if the market has peaked, which at some point it's going to, um, you know, pricing your home is going to be even more critical. You can't get away. In a hot market, sometimes if you overprice your house a little bit, because it's rising so quick, maybe the market catches up to you at some point. But this isn't the type of market that we're in. So that's the worst thing that can happen to you if you overprice your home. And that's a true story.